Hi everyone, I'm Alex Wong, the creator of the story of community and welcome to the epilogue. Every Wednesday for the next five weeks, I'll be chatting with some of my fellow community podcasters about their experience as longtime community fans, which I, as somebody first watched the show in 2019, am not. Here, once with, here with me once again are Adam from Apartment 303, Kevin from Advanced Community Studies, Alex from Six Seasons and a Podcast, and Ed from Save Greendale Committee. Hello, everyone. Hello. And today Hi. we are talking about episode 3, 2011, where I tell the story of Dan Harmon, Emmy Snubs, and the season three benching. So the first thing I wanted to bring up was, did you guys pay a lot of attention to awards? I did around the time that this was happening. I was like, you know, I was still uh, young in my like movie and TV uh, obsession. So like watching the Emmys and watching the Oscars was just something that you did. And then I just started getting so frustrated with what was winning and not winning those awards that I gradually stopped <laughs> stopped watching uh, those those shows altogether. Yeah, I got pretty into like the Oscars earlier on, but I didn't really start paying attention to the Emmys until later. And I think with Community, it, since it was like the show I was most obsessed with and the show I was paying attention to, um, like, you know, behind the scenes uh, stuff, I, I just knew it wasn't winning any. So I kind of just stopped paying attention and like none of the other shows I was watching at the time were really up for a lot. So it, yeah, it just, I didn't really have the motivation to. You know, I kind of grew up in a sort of punk rock mentality, somewhere between punk rock and hipster, if you can square those circles. So for me, winning an award was like the lame thing to have happen. So I was glad that they weren't winning. I was like, okay, that means that this show is good. So <laughs> I didn't keep track of it, you know, religiously as it was happening, but occasionally I'd go back. And even though I wondered, you know, why Danny Pudi hadn't won an award for his portrayal of Abed or, you know, a hundred other different things. I was always actually a little glad that it, that it never did. So we could maintain our, our punk rock persona uh, <laughs> as fans. I was going to follow up on that. Cause like, Oh, did Alex, did you have something to say here? No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, cause I just reading up, I, obviously I wasn't, or I wasn't paying attention at the time to the show, but it, it seems just from reading around that it almost seems like there was this sort of us against the world mentality that uh, wouldn't have formed if you had good ratings or if you had won an, an Emmy or something like that. Do you think that's accurate? I've talked about that on a couple different of these shows and it, it seems to be the general consensus that a lot of people who were watching it at the time just had that like underdog mentality about the show i mean we, we're, we're going to talk about the benching obviously that didn't help but um yeah like i said i didn't really pay attention to awards because community was never really up for them it just didn't even seem like it was much of a possibility um at least from my perspective while i was watching like i don't know it, it feels like the emmys it, and especially at the time like you kind of knew what was going to get nominated every year and like since community was didn't get any in like the first two seasons it didn't seem like it was suddenly going to get them in the third season when things were getting even weirder and more niche and like you yeah. know like i just don't think the season with virtual systems analysis is gonna get an emmy like it's just too like it, it's too loved by too specific a group that is not emmy <laughs> voters i think i don't know right yeah, no, I think you're totally right. That's, you know, I've tried watching the, the show with my wife and, and she thinks it's funny, but like you, the jokes are for a specific audience. They're, you know, like that's why Nielsen ratings were never above a certain level. It's just, it attracted a certain group of people were a bunch of misfits that, uh, you know, Dan Harmon uh, collects as he journeys on and creates these <laughs> things. And yeah, I think that's just evident in, in you know, he's finally getting the recognition that he deserves, but with uh, Rick and Morty, um, but he, he should have gotten it with community because it's, you know, the, it's the same show. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> yeah. yeah, in, in a lot in of ways, the, yeah. <laughs> in, in the table read, when they did that, um, I guess, gosh, that's almost a year ago at this point, um, 
Donald Glover actually mentioned, he said of the show community said it's, it's punk rock. It's subversive. And he acknowledged like at the time he thought, cause he was friends with Aubrey Plaza and he's like at the time we thought, okay, comedy sitcom has to look a certain way. And we knew we weren't doing that and we were doing something different. And like, it took him a while longer to even appreciate like how the approach that, that they were taking and how good it was. So he decided to leave. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Maybe needed some hindsight to, to put that in. Uh, <laughs> after everything Scrubs did for him. You yeah, know, yeah, exactly. And he, and he goes and he leaves. Yeah, there definitely was something. Punk rock is the right word. Uh, that that it felt like at the time where like it was underground you were like passing tapes back and forth with with people it was like you gotta check out this show because uh, this was uh, if if any of you youngsters can believe it there was a time where every show was not immediately available at all times so it was like I was passing my DVDs around the dorm at college just like hey check this out you know and and, and, and <laughs> gradually like building that up uh myself and there was definitely and because it was like oh modern family is going to win every emmy again this year so like and community would just i think community won a couple but it was never like best writer or best actor it was always like yeah. technical achievement and claymation and you're like well yeah there was a pretty slim pickens this year for <laughs> technical achievement and claymation uh but we i think they won a couple um uh, maybe like a special emmy for remedial chaos theory there's there's something like that in in there yeah i think they won one for chaos theory and they won a special animation one for the uh, Ovid's uncontrollable christmas but other than that yeah i think it was nothing and then um before we do the benching one thing i wanted to point out was or remember see if you remember was the year after season two the nominees for uh outstanding comedy series were either uh, in in that comedy night done right bit, it was The Office, Parks and Rec, Thirty Rock, and then it was The Big Bang Theory, which was on at the same time as Community, and then Modern Family and Glee, which each started the same year as Community. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like everyone in its orbit except for Community, which is kind of I found kind of fascinating. All right, <laughs> quick hitter time. How do you how do you remember reacting to the benching? If you remember, if not, make something up, and no one will know the wiser. Flabbergasted. <laughs> Apoplectic. Um, I was, I mean, that was the height of my like proselytizing around about community, like, you know, gathering people to watch every episode of season three in the freshman dorm. So like to hear the show is getting benched. I mean, it did feel like a, a sucker punch because this show had become very personal to a lot of people. Um, and it was just like, wow, this might be it. Like <laughs> this might be Sony and NBC, like putting community in a box from which it will never return. And people will argue if it ever did, uh, not to not to get metaphorical here, but it was, right. it was, it was, it was, a, it was drama. It was a big deal if you were around at the time. Yeah. Like I said, this was like the show that really, I learned about all this, I learned so much about the way TV works through watching the show. And that was very true in the benching situation. And it was the first time like something outside of the actual show, a show or a movie or whatever, like some, you know, behind the scenes thing really hurt me, you know, like I had never, it was, it was be long before I'd ever been hurt by like a director dropping out of a project or disappointed by a bad sequel or something like this was like the first time where like, there was something that had nothing to do with the show itself, just just gut punching me on my way to school that day. <laughs> and then like that was the that like two months or three months or whatever where it was off air. I, I can't remember exactly how long it was, but it was like that winter. Um, it, I, that's when I made my first Twitter account and was like literally all my tweets were saved community. Um, I went to like a, a fan uh, festival thing at the Paley Center in New York City and like we got to watch um, the first episode back, Urban Matrimony, like a week early. And it was like this big celebration of like, we finally made it, we're coming back. And like, I think that was also the year where a bunch of fans, I wasn't a part of this, but a bunch of fans went to Rockefeller uh, Center and like sang uh, Christmas Troy and, and a bunch of other <laughs> community things outside. And it was like, it was like, the first time feeling like a part of like, you know, a, a fandom or a movement. And it was, you know, it, it was really because it got benched that I, I 
got so engaged in it. Remember when Troy meets LeVar Burton? Yeah. That's sure. how I felt. <laughs> trying to think of a you can't disappoint a some kind of pun. But... Podcast? <laughs> That's already taken. Yeah. Oh, already, I mean... already did. <laughs> You can't disappoint NBC. I don't know. You definitely can. Yeah, I got. They, I they can disappoint you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, that's gonna do it for this episode of the epilogue. I am really bad at transitioning out of this. Um, should probably. You're doing all right. The next yeah. Week. Welcome to the club. Um, don't worry about it. You could so, just take what you said last time and just put it here. Just oh, slap it's not it. a bad idea. Except Adam changes background, so it's not gonna work. I uh, think you'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be an right. Easter egg for all of yeah, people right. who religiously watch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks to uh, Adam, Kevin, Alex, and Ed. As always, you can find links to their podcasts at bit.ly slash the story of community. Thank you to you all for listening to the podcast. And I'll be back next week with, let's see if I can get this right, to talk about episode four, 2012. Uh, so hope you enjoy and I'll see you then.